Hi guys, Grand J here and welcome to another one of our videos. Opus 6 is now officially out and I hope you guys are enjoying the set as much as I am. So in today's video we'll be talking about the lightning cards of the set. So let's get into it. So the first card we'll be talking about is Alcid. It's a free cost backup when Alcid enters the field. Choose two forward and pro controls to dull them. So this card is very similar to a Ice Summon in the form of Shiva where you get to double two of your points forwards. However, this card um, um, doesn't allow you to play it at any time that where you could play a summon. It is attached to a backup. Dulling two opponents forwards is pretty good. So it does clear out uh, space for you to attack with all your forwards. Um, but ultimately the biggest issue with this card is the fact that its name is Alcid. So um, probably the best lightning card in the game um, is Alcid right now. Um, and it's, yeah, it's a four cost forward that like, just pretty much kills something as soon as it comes into play. Um, and this, this backup clashes with it. Um, so unfortunately that's its biggest drawback and probably the single handed reason why it won't see play. But if you don't have any Alcids and you can't afford them and you can't find them because Alcids are really difficult to get, they are like pulling teeth, um, then yeah, then I guess you got nothing to hold you back from playing this Alcid. Um, something interesting to note that it is a FFTA2 card. So if you are playing a FFTA2 deck, um, which is a deck that I'm interested in building um, that uses Wind and Lightning and that uses like Luso to look for FFTA2 cards, um, that this Alcid is an available target um, to uh, for, Lu uh, for Luso's effect. So um, yeah, so I guess that's kind of the only sort of like positive to this card. Um, its ability is like not particularly fantastic either. Um, it's just okay. At free CP, it's um, about the right cost, but at like at free CP, um, you can't just like drop it on your first turn. So there is a little bit of awkwardness to it. Not that you would ever really want to drop it on your first turn anyways, um, even if it was two CP. Um, but yeah, so this card, it only has the single ability when it comes to play. And generally when you want, uh, what you want out of your free CP backups is either going to like kill a guy, permanently uh, deal with a guy or having some sort of ongoing relevant ability. And I think um, Alistair just kind of like doesn't really shine enough to sort of justify him uh, as a card. Next, we got uh, Arisha Al Rasha. It's a two CP backup um, for Lightning Dull. Discard a summon. Search for one summon and add it to your hand. So this card is like so. Um, it's a little bit inefficient in the fact that you're effectively paying two CP um, for an ability, and then you have to to basically switch out a summon from your hand to another summon in your deck. Um, so yeah, so this card is not particularly fantastic, although I can see uses for this card. Um, so for Lightning, most of Lightning's cards all just are basically kill a guy, right? Um, so yeah, so it's not particularly amazing uh, in Lightning, um, but I can I can potentially see it in like some more toolboxy decks, such as like a, a Lightning Earth deck where um, Earth has a lot of very good um, reactive um, Earth summons. Um, so yeah, whether you want a Titan or whether you want a Hecaton Care or whether you want a Carbuncle, um, these are all summons that are particularly good in very specific situations. Um, and having Arisha um, on the field allows you to switch one of these uh, Earth Summons from your from your hand for another one from your deck. So there is some niche uses there. Um, I guess there's another niche use in the form of uh, Arisha in just Mono Lightning in that uh, Mono Lightning does have access to a pretty good EX Burst in the form of 7 cost Odin from Opus 1, which is just a 7 cost um, it, EX Burst to just destroy a, uh, destroy a forward. Um, obviously, it's a very good EX Burst, but it is very over cost, so you generally don't want to pay 7 um, to ever cast it in general. So um, it, um, Arisha does give you the option to effectively pay two CP to switch it out for a more relevant Odin um, or relevant, relevant summon uh, for that particular part of the game. So um, not a bad card. There's definitely ways to use it. Um, but it is a little bit pricey for effectively what it does. Um, the fact that you don't have to break this back up is pretty solid. Um, and yeah, so it does, um, it does clash um, with uh, the free cost uh, Arisha, which does search you for um, uh, a type zero card. Um, but if you're not playing like any deck that really requires you to search for type zero cards, um, then yeah, this is not a bad uh, two CP backup to chuck into your deck, especially if you've got a more uh, summon heavy lineup. Next, we have Adia. It is a four CP backup um, for uh, Dull. Put Adia into break zone. Choose one job which in your break zone, play it onto the field. You can only use this ability during your turn. So currently in the game, there are only two witches, although there are multiple copies. Um, so obviously Adia is a witch. Um, and the other witch in the game is Ultimecia. Um, so yeah, so like the... The main, the, the main uh, reason for this card is probably 
to play out another uh, another copy of Ide uh, Idea. Um, yeah, that's kind of like what this card was built for. So in in a game where you do happen to run through all your ideas, like let's say you've used all three ideas in your mono lightning deck, um, you can like put this back up down and then you can eventually break it to put an idea from your break zone back onto the field and reuse its enter playability. That being said though, um, because you are breaking it back up, um, or in this case, this idea, in order to put a deer onto the field, idea is gonna come in and you're only gonna have uh, four lightning backups at most, um, which means that ideas like legendary ideas potency is going to be a little bit limited in that it will only be able to kill a forward of cost four or less that being said um like there's a lot of good forwards at, uh, at the four cost mark so in a lot of cases it is going to be killing um a lot of uh, a lot of very uh relevant forwards um so it's not bad um the annoying thing is that it's not a backup that you can kind of just put in the early to mid game in the sense that like if you have this idea down then you are locking yourself out of playing um any of those legendary ideas so um this is pretty much a backup you only want to put into play after you've exhausted um, all of your idea account, or like at least two of your ideas. Um, that being said though, Lightning already has a way to recur its forwards from the break zone in the form of Zemus. Um, while Zemus is a little bit more difficult to protect, um, Zemus has the flexibility of being able to play other Lightning forwards onto the field as well, and is also like a four cost, uh, four cost AK body. Um, so I don't really think that this idea really has any um, place um, in mono lightning decks, um, simply because Zemus already sort of fulfills that, um, fulfills that niche and lightning already has ways of recurring cards from its breaks on back to its hand in, in the form of Sage or in the form of, uh, lightning for Sawyer if you do break it. So, um, Adia doesn't really sort of fulfill a, uh, a need or a niche that lightning doesn't already have, um, pretty solid ways of dealing with already. Next is the most exciting card of Lightning and probably like the first or second most exciting card of the set. So this is definitely tying against the name for the most uh, pricey or valuable legendary of the set. And it is Estinian. It is a five cost uh, forward at 8,000 power. So it is slightly below the curve, but if you control five or more backups, Estinian gains haste. So that's pretty good already. When Estinian is blocked, break the blocking forward. Um, and for Lightning, activate Estinian. Estinian can attack once more this turn. You can only use this ability during your turn and only once per turn. So this card is absolutely fantastic. Um, the only downside to this card is that it is slightly below curve, but um, yeah, it's um, unbelievably amazing. It is an absolute offensive powerhouse. Um, yeah, if you do get that five backup stage, he comes in and can attack straight away. Um, and yeah, for additional lightning, he can attack again. And yeah, you know, it's very difficult for your opponent to block because effectively, um, anytime they block it, their forward is destroyed. So like combat, they can't beat him in combat. Um, yeah, so unless they have a forward that has an ability where they can't be broken by ability, such as like the new Hiroko Yashtola or legendary Vincent, um, Istini is going to be killing anything that he fights against. Um, so yeah. Um, in addition, he's also Job Dragoon, which does uh, lead to some uh, some support in the form of uh, Kane, which does buff Dragoons, um, some standard units that can get buffs uh, for the number of Dragoons you have, as well as a backup called King of Brumisha that allows you to search for Job Dragoons or um, or standard unit Dragoons from your deck. So um, Estinian just fits very, very well in the Lightning package. Um, in regards to its first ability of uh, having five or more backups, this is also a recurring theme in Lightning as well in the form of Adia, which also... Um, takes into consideration uh, lightning backups and also Opus One Ramso as well that gets bigger for more lightning uh, uh, for more uh, backups you have in, uh, have on the field. So Estinian just like fits in very well with um, the existing synergies in lightning, um, and it is a very uh, it's a very strong uh, powerful card that rewards you very well for um, playing into that sort of ramping lightning deck. So um, this is definitely one of those cards that I, I think I'm going to keep an eye out on, and it's definitely one of those cards I'm going to um, try out um, in my testing in the near future. Next, we have the smaller Estinian. So it is a free cost, free cost forward at 7,000 power, so it's on curve. Um, you can only pay with CP produced by lightning backups to play Estinian from your hand onto the field. Um, it's got haste and first strike. So um, this card's restriction is very similar to a card uh, that we had from Opus 3, White Tiger, Lassie, Nimbus. Um, so to clarify, Estinian can only be played onto the field um, by, uh, by, uh, uh, by paying free lightning CP from lightning backups, um, produced by lightning backups. Yeah, so only CP produced by lightning backups. So you have to specifically tap um, free lightning backups in order to play this uh, onto the field. You cannot play it um, with like abilities such as Alcid or any sort of effects that put a forward onto the field. Um, yeah, so he can only be played like in 
normal summon like normal summon method by uh, by paying with free uh, lightning CP from lightning backups. Um, so in that case, his uh, his ability is a little bit restrictive um, in the form of yeah, he's pretty much only going to be played in uh, mono lightning, or he's only going to be playable in mono lightning. Um, interestingly enough. Um, yeah, it says it has to be CP produced by lightning backups as opposed to lightning CP produced by backups. So you can't use um, stuff like Shatoto or Chaos or Cosmos to sort of like cheat the CP out, unfortunately. Um, but yeah, that being said, if you do put this guy down um, for like, yeah, while dulling free uh, free lightning backups, his ability, yeah, his ability of haste and first strike is actually not too bad. Um, but that being said, though, Lightning already has a lot of forwards around that free CP mark, um, uh, six or seven K mark that already have a very like, um, similar type ability. So we already have like, um, we already have Nashru and uh, Hildegarn, I think. Yeah. So yeah, we already have him, which is a, a free CP uh, 7k4 that, uh, that has haste that can also get plus 2000 from Nashru. We have Allure, which is a free CP haste forward at 6000 power um, that can prevent the first ability or someone that targets him. And we also have in, in this set, uh, the new free cost Seifer that has uh, potentially first strike and haste as well. So like Estinian, its drawback is uh, probably equally or more restrictive as uh, the other cards that he's competing with. And there's already a lot of free CP forwards at around that same mark that also fight eff uh, effect pretty effectively as well. So Astinian doesn't really do anything that Lightning doesn't already um, do pr uh, pretty well. Um, and because of that, uh, Astinian's kind of pushed out of the meta. If he was a different color potentially, such as like water, um, potentially might, uh, he might have been more relevant. But in Lightning, he doesn't really do anything that Lightning already can't do effectively well. Um, so yeah, because of that, he won't see play, and also he locks out um, one of the like one of the better lightning legendaries as well. So um, yeah, because of, because of those two reasons, he pretty much won't see play. Not to say that this card is a bad card. Next, we have Kane. It's a free CP forward at nine thousand power. When uh, when a dark forward your opponent enters the field, um, your opponent gains control of Kane. When a dark forward you control is put from the field into break zone, your opponent gains control of Kane. So yeah, so effectively, if your opponent is playing dark forwards, um, then yeah, they're going to be able to steal your cane. But if you're able to kill those dark forwards, um, you know, if you're able to kill those dark forwards um, while they control cane, you get your cane back. So that's kind of um, the thing of cane, uh, the the sort of drawback of cane. Um, uh, that being said, though, he is a free CP nine K, so he is like quite above curve. So it's like two K above curve, um, and he does have uh, dragoon job, which is also like pretty solid as well. Um, that being said, though, this card is very metagame specific. So obviously, if there's a lot of dark forwards um, being played in the metagame, then Kane becomes like significantly worse. And unfortunately, I feel that we are kind of uh, currently in a metagame where there's a lot more uh, dark forwards, um, simply because uh, Camelot is uh, very good in the game right now. Um, and Camelot obviously forces those decks to play more dark dark cards in the form of Cosmos or in the form of uh, uh, the Emperor or potentially in the form of Kefka as well. So because the metagame is so filled with a lot of like high value, like very solid dark forwards, um, Kane is not in a very good meta right now. If it, if he was released in say like the Opus Three meta, where there were a lot of light forwards in the form of say Light Zidane, um, then this might have been a better meta game for him to be played in. Um, but yeah, so like in the current meta game, um, you're gonna find that this Kane gets stolen away from you more often than you would like. Next we have Black Mage. It's a two CP backup. So for triple lightning then free CP, then dull, then put Black, Mage, Black, put Black Mage into break zone, choose one active forward, deal at 9,000 damage. So this is um, a backup that I don't think is particularly good. It is quite overcosted. So admittedly, backups and their effects are generally uh, overcosted um, because they are um, because they fundamentally are backups that can be used to produce CP. And eventually at some point you can break them for some sort of ability. That being said though, um, effectively you are paying seven CP to deal 9K damage to an active forward. Um, so you are paying quite a lot for it. Um, yeah, and in, in that regard, I think in a lot of cases, you'd much prefer using the Opus 1 Black Mage where you're paying two lightning, dulling and breaking to destroy a um, damage forward. Um, yeah, so both of them have uh, some... Uh, both this black mage and like that opus one black mage both have their conditions in this case it has to be an active forward and it has to be something that you can kill with nine thousand damage as well um and but the thing is that you're paying significantly more you're paying like almost two and a half times the amount of cp as uh, as the other black mage plus like there are all a ton of other black mages that all sort of like destroy forwards um in very specific niche situations um that being said though i don't think um this black mage is particularly cost effective and i don't think it covers a need that 
Lightning has. So Lightning has a lot of ways of dealing with large forwards. Um, yeah, and this doesn't sort of circumvent any sort of uh, issues that Lightning already has. So it doesn't get around any cards that can't be chosen by abilities, which is something that li uh, Lightning has a little bit of a problem with. Um, and yeah, and so like, yeah, this doesn't really sort of help out. It can't hit dull forwards, which is something that also Lightning um, struggles a little bit against. So yeah, this Black Mage doesn't fulfill a weakness that Lightning has. Um, and it's very expensive for what Lightning already does quite well. Um, and in addition to that, there's, Lightning also has a lot of really good two CP backups in the form of like a ton of Black Mages and like some uh, Red Mages as well. Um, and in the form of like a lot of like support two CP backups in the form of Nashu um, or in like in this set in the form of Fujin as well. Uh, so no, Raijin as well. Um, so because that is, they're going to squeeze out a lot of the two CP Lightning backups and I think um, this card just doesn't make the cut in any sort of like competitive fashion. So the next card we have is Quetzalcoatl. It is a 2 CP summon, it's EX Burst. Choose one forward you control and one forward your opponent controls. Until the end of the turn, the former gains plus 2,000 power and the latter loses 2,000 power. So in English, choose one uh, choose one of your forwards, it gains plus 2,000 power and choose one of your opponent's forwards, it loses 2,000 uh, power. So in a lot of games, there's a summon or instant um, of this sort of variety where you're buffing one of you guys and you're debuffing one of your opponent's guys. Pretty much in a one versus one combat, this pretty much means you win the fight. Um, but it is uh, a very narrow summon. So the fact that uh, the fact that it's EX Burst does, does give it some points, but the fact that it says choose one forward you control and one forward your opponent controls is actually very very limiting. Um, so for for two reasons. First of all, you legally must have one target of your own and one target of your opponent. So if your opponent can't be chosen by summons, then you can't even choose your uh, you can't even like legally cast this summon. Um, just if you want to buff one of your own guys for plus 2,000 power. So that's a bit of an issue as well. Um, so if if it was worded, choose up to one forward you control and up to one forward your opponent controls, um, that and that gave you some sort, of, sort of flexibility, I would rate this card a lot more. Um, but because it doesn't say that, um, you're forced to choose one of your own guys and choose one of your opponent's guys. Um, and if your opponent doesn't have any forwards and like you want to just buff one of your guys to get out of nuke range, so let's say if your opponent is hitting you with a Brynhilda or a Bahamut and you want to buff one of your guys to get out of range, if your opponent doesn't have a forward to, for you to give neg 2 to, you can't even give plus 2 to like your own guy. Um, so because of that, this Quetz uh, Quetzalcoatl is actually much more narrow and niche than you may think. Um, and Lightning already has a lot of ways to like um, win combat and like reduce power of opponents um, opponents forwards, um, um, and like, yeah, deal damage and first strike and that sort of thing. So in general, lightning's actually pretty good in combat already. The one thing that this does that lightning doesn't really, um, do particularly well is that it's, uh, a combat trick that you can use on defense. So there's a lot of, uh, cards that lightning can do that either deal damage to active forwards, reduce power of active forwards, um, reduce power of blocking forwards. Um, but yeah, generally there's not too much that lightning can do on defense and Quetzalcoatl is probably... Um, one of the few cards that Lightning has in its arsenal that can help you uh, combat trick or win defensive combat. Um, so that's that's kind of one uh, niche use for it. Um, but that being said, Lightning is generally a pretty fast color, so it's generally going to be one of those colors that's going to be ahead on the damage race. So generally it's going to attack and not worry too much about defense. Um, so yeah, so um, this card like doesn't really sort of um, fulfill a niche that Lightning doesn't already, uh, that, uh, that Lightning has a weakness to. Um, and yeah, it doesn't really do... Uh, anything particularly well so because of that even though it's actually like reasonably well costing it it is a little bit inconsistent it's a little bit narrow um and when it does trigger off all you're doing is winning a combat and lightning can already do that pretty effectively already so because of that i don't think that this is a summon that lightning really needs uh within its toolkit next we have colossus it's a four cost monster pay zero until the end of turn Colossus also becomes a four with 7,000 power. When Colossus attacks, deal 1,000 damage to all forwards your opponent controls. You can only use this ability once per turn. So I think that this monster is actually pretty underwhelming. Um, yes, it does pay zero to transform it. So it does have like that pseudo immunity of that. It's just a monster when it's not a forward. Um, that being said though, it does become a 7,000 power forward at four CP. So that's a little bit under cost not particularly big. And generally most like mid range forwards are generally going to be able to match that or be bigger than that. So he's not really getting over anything particularly big. Um, and yeah, the secondary ability of when he attacks deal 1000 damage to all your opponent's forwards um, is not particularly, uh, it's not particularly amazing. Um, like, yes, it does. Uh, it does allow certain abilities that, um, that trigger on damage forwards um, to be used. That being said, though, it's uh, it's this one thousand damage spread only occurs when you attack with this forward. Um, 
does sort of narrow its scope. Um, you can't use this ability in your main phase and then use like a forward or backup ability, um, like an enter play ability to like deal lethal damage. You have to successfully attack with the Colossus. And in a lot of cases, if your opponent just blocks it, you lose your Colossus and you spend all this like CP, like four CP to put out a 7k forward that effectively only de dealt 1k damage to all your opponent's forwards um, on its attack. So I feel that this card is underpowered and like spreading 1k damage to all your opponent's forwards doesn't justify this uh, this card's um, size or power. If I were to play a monster from Lightning at four cost, I would probably play Twilight Odin. Um, so yes, Twilight Odin does cost you one uh, Lightning CP to play, um, to uh, to attack, but um, when Twilight Odin does successfully deal damage to your opponent, you do get to destroy one of their forwards. So um, the payoff is much bigger with, uh, with Twilight Odin, whereas Colossus, yeah, you like the, the payoff isn't particularly good. It doesn't really do anything interesting um, and its size doesn't sort of justify it. Um, considering, yeah, it is a Magitek armor and it's Colossus, you would have expected it to be slightly bigger size. If it was like even AK, C, uh, a, like AK power, um, and spread 1k damage that would be like more justifiable but yeah he had to be slightly under uh undersized and um i think uh yeah i think that's that's what really holds it back the fact that it's 7000 power and secondary ability doesn't really justify its sort of smaller cost and yes while it is a monster um it's not a particularly good monster so like why would you even play it Next, we have the second legendary of the set. We have Seifer. It's a free cost forward at 6,000 power, so it is slightly below the curve um, of 7,000 power, but when Seifer blocks or is blocked, choose one forward and uh, opponent controls, it loses 2,000 power until the end of turn. When Seifer deals damage to your opponent, all forwards your opponent controls lose 2,000 po uh, 2, power until the end of turn. So this card is actually very solid. Um, but it's only very solid uh, in context of you having the backup supports for him that came out of this set in the form of at least Raijin, but ideally with Raijin and Fujin. Um, so yeah, so um, yeah, obviously Raijin gives uh, C for haste and Fujin gives him first strike. Um, yeah, if you do consider the fact that he has like, it's a free CP 6k with haste, that's uh, that's not, uh, that's pretty solid. And if he makes a guy lose 2000 power, it means it can, um, it can win against 7k uh, power forwards in combat in that you reduce the power from 7k down to 5k. So you're winning combat. Um, if you have Fujin, it like, it, uh, it, um, it increases the combat it, uh, that it can win, increase the combat it can win by an extra 1000. So it can reduce an AK down to 6k and then first strike it out. So um, both of these effectively, um, yeah, both uh, both of those backups would significantly uh, improve Seifer. Um, yeah, and to make up for his sm uh, smaller size. If they didn't exist, then I would think that this uh, uh, this legendary is a little bit underpowered. Um, but considering those two cards, um, I think it's it's a it's a solid package. Um, in addition, it's also a free cost uh, lightning forward as well, so it does combo uh, with Alcid, and it actually combos with it pretty well. So if you play Alcid, you're dealing 6k to one of your opponent's forwards, which generally isn't enough to kill it, but you are getting a Seifer, um, and if you have Rajan on the field, he does have haste, so you attack with Seifer, your opponent blocks it, and then you can just like give him minus 2,000 power to the forward that, um, that uh, Alcid dealt 6k to, which um, will reduce his power by 2, which means that um, between Alcid and Seifer's power reduction, it will reduce, yeah, it will kill an AK, AK forward. But if your opponent doesn't block, then yeah, you deal damage to your opponent and you, you give uh, negative 2000 power to all your opponent's forwards and you kill it anyways, right? So your opponent's in like a lose-lose situation when combo with Alcid, assuming you have Raijin on the field. Um, and yeah, and so like this card, like by itself, not particularly amazing, but in this package, uh, it actually becomes more fun um, and a lot stronger. And Wind and Lightning already share a lot of synergies in the form of like Cactor enabling a lot of abilities uh, um, from damage uh, from damage forwards. Um, and so this does fit into that um, archetype particularly well. Um, and these these two colors do mesh, uh, mesh very well. So um, yeah, definitely I do think that this is a uh, very viable, uh, very viable uh, combo strategy. On the other hand, here we have uh, the smaller Seifer. It's a free cost forward at 3,000 power. It's got EX Burst. When Seifer enters the field, you may search uh, your deck for one job witch and add it to your hand. Um, so going back to the, the, the witch job, we only have two. We have Adia and Ultimecia. Pretty much the on, uh, pretty much the only witch you're going to be searching with Seifer is going to be Adia. Um, yeah. And most likely it's going to be the legendary Adia because it's the most playable amongst all the Adias. Although... 
that being said, um, an argument can be made for finding the the backup idea when it gets towards the, the later game. Um, so yeah, so effectively it comes a one CP forward at 3000 power, which is pretty standard on its own curve. Um, and it is EX burst, so there will be occasional times where you do hit off an EX burst and you get a free idea. Um, that being said though, I don't know if you really want to be searching for idea because idea is a fantastic card definitely when you play it. Um, but yeah, uh, she's also an EX burst card. So, um, having her in deck is also pretty valuable, especially when you receive damage. Um, and then if you happen to draw her, you can play her. But I don't think you need to take proactive steps to search for a deer. Um, admittedly, Seifer, like being an EX burst, um, like, so if you EX burst Seifer from damage, searching for, a, uh, searching for a free idea is like pretty good. Um, but other than that, like... I don't think you would ever want to play like Seifer as a forward, um, unless you want to use it as a like a haste attacker in a very um, open board. Um, so yeah, in in that regard, uh, I don't think um, this Seifer is necessary. Not to say he's a bad card, and not to say you wouldn't want to switch a deer, but I don't think he's necessary. In that um, having a deer in your deck is fine, and when you draw a deer naturally through like the game's process, it's very solid as well. And if you want to recur ideas. Um, through the use of sages or through the use of uh, zemuses, you've got plenty of ways of doing that. Seifer doesn't, um, this Seifer isn't really needed even in a mono lightning deck that wants to focus around a deer. Next, we have Summoner. It's a 1 CP backup, just like all the other 1 CP backups from all the other colors. Um, yeah, out of, amongst all the colors to play like a 1 CP backup, Lightning is, uh, is going to be the, the most or the second most likely simply because, as we said, there's a lot of Lightning cards um, that do scale up um, with the number of backups. So we do have Legendary Idea, and we do have uh, Legendary Astini from this set um, that, tr uh, that triggers a Billy when you have five backups, and we do have Opus 1 Ram, so that gets bigger for the number of backups you have. Um, so yeah, because of that, um, Lightning does have a propensity to want to build backups very quickly um, and build them up to like five backups maximum um, as quickly as it can. So obviously Summoner is a great way of doing that. Um, and because of that, if you want to build a mono lightning strategy with um, these archives, then this is definitely a card that you probably want to have at least two of in your deck. Next we have Ninja. It's a two CP backup when Ninja enters the field, choose one damage forward, deal at 5k damage. This is actually very well costed, um, all things considered. Um, admittedly, yeah, it only it only works against damage forwards, um, but 5k is a lot of damage um, to be effectively dealing for free um, on a 2 CP backup. So um, so yeah, if you're sending in a forward and you happen to lose combat, this ninja will generally allow you to like finish off combat. Um, if you've got ways of dealing small amounts of like ping damage, um, then yeah, Ninja will generally allow you to finish it off as well. Um, in a like Fire Lightning build, then I can see this being uh, far more relevant um, because Fire has a lot of ways to deal with like small packs of damage or effectively free. Um, so yeah, so like you can just play it forward, it will come in and do like three or 4k damage for free. Um, and then yeah, you can just play a Ninja as a backup um, and you're dealing 5k damage. So this Ninja is actually pretty solid. Um, yeah, like obviously, uh, lightning has lightning has a lot of ways of dealing damage, so it does fit into that pretty well. Um, in the lightning wind, uh, in the lightning wind deck, it actually fits in pretty well with that as well. Um, yeah, you can cactor a guy to deal one k, and then ninja deals another five k, which is six k damage, which is not too bad. But if you have like multiple cactors or other ways to deal multiple uh, multiple packs of damage, um, it does combo particularly well. At the very least, you can play something like a rigdia, like a rigdia that you didn't pair up with an alcid, um, and then play a ninja, and that's eight k damage. So that's like pretty solid and you're getting a 2 CP backup. So you're playing this fundamentally to get a 2 CP backup, but it has a very immediate and pretty relevant ability when it does come into play. So it's actually like pretty solid. Um, and yeah, so I think that this card is fine. Um, obviously like Lightning uh, Lightning has to fight very uh, fight, fight very aggressively um, for which 2 CP backups it wants to play because a lot of them uh, are quite good. Um, that being said, though, I think in like straight mono lightning, I think Ninja might be just slightly below, uh, slightly below the cut. Um, it's 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 not too far off, but I think um, right now it's just slightly uh, slightly not good enough. Um, but if like if you have a little bit more space in your deck, um, I can potentially see slotting in like one copy of this card potentially, um, depending on like uh, what sort of uh, what sort of lightning backup uh, backup line you want to uh, uh, you want to build. Next we have Deep Vern. It's a one CP lightning monster. So it's got lightning one, put Deep Vern into a break zone, choose one four to cost three or less, break it. So yeah, this uh, this is not a particularly cost effective way of dealing with uh, three or less uh, CP forwards. 
Um, but there are some relevant uses to this. So um, obviously the fact that it's a monster means that you can put it down at some point later in the game or even on the turn that you put into play, you can pay the cost to use its ability to destroy a four to three or less. Um, but the strength of this card is the fact that it is a one CP monster, which means it is a monster that a single Uriandra can play. So Uriandra um, is a card that we saw from the previous set where when he enters play, you can play a monster from your break zone onto the field um, that has cost equal or less than the number of uh, Sign of Seventh Dawn forwards you have. Um, and obviously Uriandra counts himself. So at the very least, you're getting a one CP monster and Deep Vern, um allows you to do that. Um, so like, yeah, so Uriandra allows you to um, recur Deep Vern, where um, Uriandra typically um, from, <clears throat> from, from the previous metagame would um, pick up a Layak. Um, but yeah, picking up Deep Vern is actually not too bad. Um, and I think Deep Vern might be actually relevant in the upcoming metagame um, because uh, Guy seems like a very strong forward. Um, and obviously Leon seems like a very strong forward and like the FF2 package, I think it's got a pretty severe weakness to Deep Vern, um, especially in Lightning, simply because uh, both Guy and Leon are very, very large. Uh, very, very large. Guy is typically going to be sitting at like 9 or 10k and Leon is going to be like base 8k forward. Um, so yeah, and like one, like Guy's 3cp forward and Leon is 1cp forward. So if you're using any sort of like expensive removal, um, even like an, like an ousted Onionite, you don't really want to be ousted Onioniting a, a Leon. Um, yeah, but Deep Run's actually a pretty reasonable um, way of dealing with it, especially if you can get one for free off Uriandra. So if your metagame does um, does look like it's going to be like more sort of swarmy, powerful forwards, um, then Deep Run, I think, is actually a uh, Deep Run and Uriandra package is something that I think you can like um, try putting uh, into your deck to try to handle like a more aggressive uh, metagame. Next, we got Fremelda. It is a four cost, uh, four cost four to eight thousand power. When Fremelda enters the field, choose one active forward and opponent controls. Deal at four thousand damage for each job sword saint you control. Um, so Fremelda is a sword saint uh, by himself, so he uh, will always do like minimum four k unless he loses his job. Um, but that's not a particularly easy thing to do in this game. Um, yeah. In the game right now, there are only two Sword Saints. We got Fremelda and we have two copies of Orlando. So if you ever want to deal like more than 4K damage, you're going to have to play Fremelda with Orlando, um, in which case he's dealing 8K damage, which is actually very solid. Dealing 8K damage on an 8K forward, um, that's four CP. It's actually very, very well costed. That being said though, he doesn't have a lot of, uh, yeah, he de doesn't have a lot of cards that can help trigger um, that 8K damage. Um, and Orlando, yeah. Um, the the five CP Orlando from Opus Four is the good one. The Opus One is pretty bad. So like um you're really relying on having um yeah the other good Orlando on the field to sort of make this card good. Um it is an it is an FFTA two card in Lightning, so that that does give it a, like a couple of points. Um and I keep talking about this like win Lightning FFTA two deck, so I probably should build this at some point to like prove to you guys that's actually like a viable deck. Um but yeah, so like dealing four K four K damage on an uh from a uh, eight, uh, four CP AK forward is not terrible. Um, obviously you want to like hit the, hit that AK damage, uh, while you have Orlando on the field. That being said though, if you have an Orlando on the field, you're generally in a pretty solid spot in my opinion. Um, yeah. And Orlando sees play in like every like wind lightning deck. It's such a fantastic card there. Um, but I don't think Fremelda really sort of fits in, uh, fits into the wind lightning deck. Um, if Fremelda was to see play, it probably put out push out Barbarisha. Um, but yeah, Barbarisha has like is pretty cost effective for what it does and isn't particularly conditional. Um, so yeah, so I think in in that deck, which is pretty much the only deck where you'd play for uh, play Fremelda because it's the only deck where you'd play Orlando, um, Fremelda would be competing against Barbarisha, and I think Barbarisha is a little bit better than Fremelda, um, despite Barbarisha being a slightly lower power level. So next we got Yuen. It's a free, uh, free cost five thousand power forward. So it is um, quite below curve. But if your opponent controls three or more forwards, Yuen gains haste, and Yuen cannot be blocked. Um, yeah, I think unfortunately this card's ability is a little bit too niche, um, and like his his size kind of like is really uh, really sort of undercuts his viability. Um, so yeah, so it's not very often that your opponent is going to have three or more forwards on the field, and if your opponent does have three or more forwards on the field you're probably losing in a lot of cases. Um, so yeah, so, um, yeah, so, and like you're playing lightning as well. And lightning is so good at blocking up opponent, uh, opposing dudes. So yeah, yeah, your opponent's never going to get three or more forwards on the field against uh, a lightning deck that's running removal. So this, this ability is almost never going to trigger. And if this ability is almost going to trigger, he, uh, he like almost never going to trigger, he's effectively just a free CP forward at 5,000 power, which is bad. Um, with no effect. So, um, I would not play you in pretty much 
ever. Um, and yeah, like, like it's it's a card that's only becomes barely playable if his ability is online and his ability is like hardly ever going to be online. And you don't ever want his ability to be online. You don't ever want your opponent to have three or more forwards. Um, so yeah, so Ewan is like a card that's only only good when you're losing by quite a lot and he doesn't turn the table around when you're losing quite a lot. It just makes this card not garbage. It's still probably not good. Um, but yeah, so like Ewan is just like underwhelming at his best and bad at its worst. Next we have Raijin. Um, so yeah, we talked about this uh, a little bit before how it um, supports Seifu. So it is a 2 CP backup. The card named Seifu you control gains haste, so that's pretty good. Um, it's got an S ability, Raijin special. So S dull, choose one active forward, deal at 8,000 damage. You can only use this ability if you control a card named Cypher and a card named Fujin. So to clarify, you don't need to have Cypher and Fujin on resolution of this ability. You just need to have them on the field when you activate this ability. So your opponent, um, if they respond by destroying Raijin, Fujin or Seifu, um, it doesn't uh, it doesn't negate this ability. However, if they make their forward no longer active, it does fizzle out this ability. So do keep that in mind. But uh, in terms of like uh, like the S and the costing, the S build is actually very very good. Um, so yeah, for S dull, 8K is actually very good, even though it is on active forward, which in a lot of cases is pretty much fine. Um, its base ability of yeah giving your C for haste is actually very solid, especially uh, considering the legendary C from this set and also one of the C for's from Opus Two that deals damage to forwards whenever it's blocked. Um, and obviously pairing it up with uh pairing up with Fujin does uh unlock its S ability. Um and yeah, in a deck where you are sort of building around Sifu, you probably want to go uh at least two or three Fujin and like triple Raijin to trigger off its S ability more often. And obviously these guys uh, make a very good trio of cards. Um so yeah, so all around this card is very solid. Um pretty much like I wouldn't even consider it a new legendary Sifu playable if um Raijin didn't exist um to support him. Um so yeah, so if you're playing a new Sifu. Play, play free Raijin, and if you're playing free Raijin, you might as well play free Fujin. Um, so yeah, so that's kind of my opinion. Um, if you're going to play New Cypher, you kind of only can play him in Lightning Wind, um, because yeah, Raijin is, um, Raijin will award you so much more um, if you have Fujin on the field, and Fujin obviously works uh, very well with Seifer, and yeah, and you want triple Raijin, because um, like Seifer's, uh, most of them are pretty bad without Raijin to give him haste. Next we have Ramu, and it is a free cost summon. Select two of the four following actions. So choose one monster of cost two or less, break it. Choose one forward of cost four or less, dull it. Choose one active forward, deal it 7k damage. And choose one lightning forward, it gains haste until the end of turn. So this is a summon I like a lot. So admittedly it doesn't have EX burst, so you're not gonna get free value out of it. But in terms of just like a hard cast, um, or just like a normal casting, um, this card is actually very, very good value. So um, if you just consider the fact that um, at free CP, you can um, choose one active forward, deal at 7k damage, plus get another ability, that's actually pretty good value, right? Um, the fact that it hits a monster of two or less um, is just like a really good tool, um, especially in the, in the current metagame, um, where like, yeah, there's a lot of like, uh, annoying uh, one or two cost CP monsters. Um, they're generally the monsters that don't transform into forwards. They're generally those monsters that have some sort of annoying ability that uh, trigger on some sort of condition or are some sort of uh, uh, are some sort of monster that can has some sort of payment ability. So using Ramu to clear them is actually fantastic, and having Ramu in your deck just gives you the option to clear them out. Um, but yeah, so not only do you get to kill a monster, but you get to do something else, which in this case um, is in a lot of cases going to be kill an act a deal active for uh, forward seven k damage. Um, 7k damage is a very, very good number to hit. So you're pretty much killing anything that's cost free, uh, free or less. Um, and against anything bigger, you're generally going to, uh, it generally allows you to either combo with more damage or to you, or, or to like trade up in combat. So, um, yeah, the fact that you're getting two of these four actions is very, very good. Like you can two for one guy. So you can literally kill their like active forward 7k and also kill a monster at the same time for free CP. And that's just really, really, really good value. Um, yeah, so I like if you're playing Lightning, I, I pretty much would like start off with just like two copies of this guy because there's no situation where he's just not good. Um, I don't feel. Um, he's just like so good, like in, in most situations. It's so versatile and it's very well costed and it gives you a lot of uh, very good value. Um, the only side, downside is that it doesn't have EX Burst, but without EX Burst, I think it's already more than fair. Next, we have Ricard. It is a 5 CP forward at 8,000 power, so it's slightly below the curve, but EX Burst, when Ricard enters the field, you may search for a card named Scott, 
Minwu or Joseph and add it to your hand, Ricard must block if possible. So if you do consider the fact that you do get a card off him, he becomes a free CP AK, which is like technically above curve. Um, and that sort of justifies his, um, his drawback of Ricard must block. Um, so yeah, so the two cards, uh, so the three cards that he searches, so Scott and Minwu are both water cards. Um, and Joseph is an ice card. Um, interestingly enough, like Ricard, um, and the three cards that you search for are all Final Fantasy 2. Um, so you're thinking, oh yeah, you know, play, play Ricard in like the, the, um, in the, in the guy Final Fantasy 2 deck. Um, and you can like get more FF2 cards. Um, but that doesn't really work out. So if you're playing Guy, um, you're probably want to, you're going to, you're probably going to want to play it with Maria and Leon because those are other big beaters. Um, and so you're already in fire and wind already. And Ricard, it only searches you for cards that are not in those colors. So Ricard is a lightning card and it searches you for like two water cards or an ice card. Um, so all three of those cards are not in the two cards that you kind of want to build FF2 in right now, which is probably going to be fire and wind in most cases. So um, Ricard like is like very inconveniently um, like attached to the colors that are not relevant to um, not relevant to the guy uh, or Furion deck. Um, so yeah, that's a little bit inconvenient. That being said though, the fact that it can pick up Scott, which is actually not, not a bad card, it's basically a knight plus 1k power, um, or a Minwu, which is actually pretty good, both in, uh, both in the form of the backup or in the forward, um, yeah, it does, like, it does search some pretty good targets. Joseph is a card we literally don't care about, so, like, forget about him. Um, but yeah, the fact that you can search for Minwu is actually pretty solid, uh, because the new Water Legendary of the set is Minwu, and it has a lot of good value to it. Um, and Minwu obviously synergizes with uh, powerful summons that cost four or less. And as we were talking about before, Ramu is a fantastic lightning summon, and lightning has a lot of fantastic summons. Um, so yeah, so uh, potentially if you this Ricard is playable um, in a lightning water deck that does want to play more play more summons. And like as we talked about earlier in the set, um, uh, Arisha Alrashia can help you search for particular summons at, at given points in the game. Um, so yeah, so that's potentially um, we're potentially looking at a FF two. Lightning water summon ba a summon heavy type strategy, um, and this potentially unlocks it. Um, unlocks this strategy. Um, the fact that Ricard must block is not too bad. Eight thousand power is already like uh, is already like very solid. Um, so in most cases, it's going to be able to block smaller forwards, um, and it's like on par with most mid range forwards. And lightning and water both have a lot of ways to reduce your opponent's forward size or increase your own forward size. Um, so Ricard is generally going to, so like Ricard's, uh, Ricard's requirement of him must blocking is generally not going to be too much of a hindrance. In a lot of cases, um, a lot of fights Ricard's going to win and like with a little bit of backup, he's pretty much going to win most fights. Um, so this card is like deceptively solid and surprisingly more playable than you may think um, in a niche year sort of deck. Um, but yeah, so like if I were to consider like a more casual tier 1.5 type build, I would be sort of like interested in trying out Ricard Minwu, um, heavy summon type strategy. Um, so that's an idea that's, um, that we'll consider later. Um, but yeah, so, so that's, that's an interesting thing about him. Um, but yeah, so like surprisingly not as bad as people probably originally assumed this card to be. Next we have Dragoon. It is a 4 CP forward, 8,000 power. It's a standard unit. When Dragoon enters the field, choose one forward against first strike until the end of the turn. Um, so yeah, so this card, like I, I said this a lot, um, this set, um, like this card doesn't do anything that Lightning doesn't already do uh, pretty well. So Lightning has a lot of ways to give its forwards first strike. Um, and Dragoon is a very slow and expensive way to do that. Um, so yeah, at 4 CP, 8K, it is on curve. Um, so it is a Dragoon that's, um, that's like fair, fairly statted, um, for, yeah, for its size. Um, and the fact that uh, there is a lot of Dragoon support now in the game, um, actually like makes Dragoons and, um, the standard unit Dragoons like, um, much more playable than people may think. Um, but the fact that his ability to give first strike is kind of wasted in lightning, um, kind of sucks. And the fact that he's like, he's a big size forward, um, at four CP, you generally want to be playing something like Kane, um, or like you want to be going a little bit higher at five cost uh, for Estinian. Um, yeah, but like four cost, like four cost Dragoon, um, it's, it's body not, isn't particularly big. Generally for Dragoons, you want to play like, like smaller, uh, smaller size forwards are like three cost, two cost. And because there's a lot of ways to bump your dragoons up, you can give them anywhere between like two to like four or five thousand power, putting your putting those dragoons from like that basic five k haste first strikers all the way up to like nine or nine or ten k first strikers, um, and you can do that across your whole board. Um, but dragoon, it's already got a 
pretty solid power line. Um, so you're kind of overpaying for a body, or you're not really overpaying, you're paying for a body that you're naturally going to be able to buff up. Whereas it's much better for you to play something that's smaller, buff them up to all like medium size. Um, so yeah, because of that, like this Dragoon is a little bit overcosted for what the Dragoon deck wants to do. And in most cases, you probably just want to have more canes in your deck. Um, or like you for four CP, you probably want to prioritize Kane, and Kane isn't uh, like isn't hard to come by because there's a lot of ways to search for him. Um, yeah, in the form of like King of Bromesia. Um, and yeah, so like this Dragoon isn't needed because it's a little bit too expensive to, uh, for what Dragoons want to do. Um, and its ability isn't fantastic in that Lightning's already got ways to do it. And yeah, like it doesn't have much synergy. If it was a free cost Dragoon, um, you can combo with something like Gladiator to put free cost damage from the break zone back on the field. But right now, as it is, it's just a little bit underwhelming. Talking about a Dragoon that is going to fit very well into the Dragoon archetype, um, we got Dragoon, obviously. It's a 2 CP forward at 5,000 power. So it's on curve already, right? But it's got like a, it's got a pretty good ability that's like worded really confusingly. For each Drop Dragoon and card named Dragoon, other than Dragoon, you control Dragoon gains plus 2,000 power, right? Um, so in proper English, this card gains plus 2,000 power for each other Job or card named Dragoon you have on the field. Um, so yeah, so um, yeah, so it doesn't count itself, obviously. Um, but yeah, if you have another Dragoon on the field, it becomes a 2CP7K, which is like already pretty fantastic. Um, I, I checked up um, online before this video, and there are no... Dragoon backups, unfortunately, so he's not going to ever be naturally bigger than 5k. Um, but yeah, but in between, like, like any sort of like lightning backup buffs, cane buffs, and like, um, it just in general combat buffs, this Dragoon is going to be a Dragoon that's always going to be quite big. Um, so if you have just another Dragoon on field, 2, two CP 7k or above curve, so it's actually very good already. But if you combo this with the 4 CP cane, um, from Opus 2 that gives all your Dragoons plus 2k. Because Kane is already a Dragoon, Dragoon gives himself plus 2k, and then this Kane gives him another 2k. So um, while Kane's on the field, this Dragoon is a 2 CP 9k. Um, and that's that's pretty fantastic. Um, and obviously, like a lot of Dragoons have a, a lot of natural ways to gain haste or gain first strike. Um, so yeah, this is this Dragoon is just like really, really, really good value. Um, so I, I like, uh, I've experimented with Dragoon stuff in the past. Um, I've experimented with Dragoon stuff in the past, and that was uh, surprisingly more competitive than I originally thought it was going to be. Um, and I think, yeah, definitely with this being added into, mix, uh, into the mix um, is definitely um, going to make the Dragoon deck a lot stronger, um, considering that like there's so many good Dragoons that were added um, this set. So I think, if anything, um, Lightning's like big theme this set was just pushing Dragoons, man. Um, Dragoons are finally like, may like almost competitive worthy they're like tier 1.2 so they're like very solid um but yeah like i wouldn't i wouldn't rock up to a national tournament with it but uh, like at your weekly to uh, at your weekly locals um i would take a dragoon deck have fun and still be pretty confident with like like taking first or second with a dragoon deck um but yeah it's it's a very solid card um and if you're going to play dragoons then i think that this is a very easy card to put into the deck and that's it for our lightning set review. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. What do you guys think? Do you think that there are cards that are overrated or underrated? Um, what are some combos that you're thinking of that I didn't talk about? Um, yeah, like how you guys enjoying the set? Any interesting deck ideas you guys have or anything you guys, uh, any questions you guys, you guys might have for me? Um, I will be putting up some deck videos up in the very near future. I am preparing for the first Australian national tournament. Um, happening not this weekend, but the weekend after. So I'll be a little bit busy and I'll be keeping some of my secret texts until after that weekend. Um, but after that weekend, I'll put a video up straight away to show you guys what, I'll, or what I'm playing at Nationals or, or what I played at Nationals so you guys can see the super secret high tech stuff that I got um, planned. Um, but yeah, so I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, sorry for the delay. I will get the next video as soon as I can. But uh, until next time, Grand J out.